Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Fury as Neil Kinnock opposes EU referendum. Top EU banks have Basel capital shortfall of 70 billion euros. Uganda gets $150 million from the EU for roads to boost regional trade. And the European Union mulls $68 billion fund to aid non-European banks. Plus, Malmström warns EU states of illegality of migrant pushbacks. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. Former Labour leader Neil Kinnock was slated yesterday for warning his party against promising an in or out EU referendum. Lord Kinnock, a one-time Vice President of the EU Commission, said Labour should absolutely not support giving the British people a say on whether to stay in the EU. And he accused David Cameron of offering a vote simply to appease anti-Europeans in the Tory party. Well, that's just fantastic. A real show of de democratic representation. It makes the German Chancellor's announcement of extending emergency powers sound reasonable. And I'm not talking about the current Chancellor Merkel when I say that. Of course, our political leaders are being forced to show their hand. They know that people want a voice. They know that we have awoken to their tyrannical game. Now they are hoping that they can buy enough time to assimilate Britain into the federal United States of Europe far enough that a referendum will make no difference at all. The top 42 banks in the European Union would need an extra 70.4 billion euros of capital to comply with new rules that take full effect in 2019, the bloc's banking watchdog said last Wednesday. Markets and regulators have been putting pressure on banks to move early to comply with the new Global Basel III Accord being phased in to dispel any doubts about their ability to thrive and encourage investors to buy their bonds and shares. The rules apply to all banks, but they are mainly aimed at the big global banks. The EBA said that by December last year, the top 42 banks already held more liquidity than they are required to by 2019. In Britain, top banks are being encouraged to tap some of their excess liquidity to lend out and aid economic recovery. There was, however, a liquidity shortfall of €225 billion Euros among the remaining 128 smaller, more domestically focused banks in the sample of 170 lenders studied by the EBA. The European Union has given Uganda €112 million Euros in credit and grants to help pay for roads meant to help boost trade in East Africa. The EU has traditionally been a major source of financing for transport infrastructure for the prospective crude oil producer. Uganda, however, has lately appeared to lean increasingly toward China, which has extended cheap loans to help finance projects including highways, hydropower dams and public office blocks. Uganda's national budget has been squeezed since major Western donors, including Britain, its biggest source of bilateral aid, suspended financial support towards the end of last year after allegations that $13 million worth of aid had been embezzled. It's a conundrum dealing with Africa. The human cost of the difficulties that continent has been put through is truly tragic. Clearly there is a need for immediate on-the-ground aid, but is the EU really in a position to be offering such financial support? We've been reporting on involvement of the EU in Africa and, as usual, the kleptocrats speak with forked tongue. Investment and aid with strings attached, as in the West African fishing rights, or this story with the oil, or complete folly with the roads that got washed away. To top it off, the story of the Congo, where governmental ministers took EU money and awarded themselves pay rises amounting to an increase of 800%. The European Union is weighing whether a 50 billion euro rescue fund can be turned into a banking backstop for member states outside the single currency bloc, two EU official sources have told the unit. 
The EU's Balance of Payments Fund currently has about 40 billion euros available after being used to help Latvia, Hungary and Romania. The European Commission now wants to overhaul the fund and add a tool for bank aid that could be tapped by non-euro countries whose lenders fail next year's continent-wide stress tests. They said on condition of anonymity because the talks are private. Now this article has loads of interesting information in it, but it pays to be in the loop. And so what I read in this article is that the EU is preparing for a further degradation of the banking system. In the earlier article, we saw that 128 small banks have 225 billion euros short of their regulatory obligations. Now, the ESM has 700 billion euros of funding. But remember, we covered the ESM in details last year. And as we discovered, the European Stability Mechanism does not have this funding on tap. It has access to it as a charge obligation over its signatories. And they are, of course, the nations that make up the EU. So as you already know, many of them are already bankrupt. The European Central Bank is going to do an asset quality review. Now, given all the derivatives and other fancy fiscal investment instruments, it will be more than a miracle if the ECB finds all these banks with a clean bill of health. Of course, with access to such financial clout and regulatory leverage, the ECB will find itself in a very powerful position come 2014. So watch this space. The European Union's Home Affairs Commissioner, Cecilia Malmström, yesterday sent a stark warning to member states that the pushbacks of asylum seekers were illegal and that countries like Malta had to guarantee access to the asylum procedure. The Swedish Commissioner was addressing member state representatives at a relocation forum intended at encouraging them to relieve small member states like Malta from the pressures of asylum claims due to their concentration at the borders of the EU. It's only fair if I state the obvious, Malmström told member states. However tough the situation gets, pushbacks are illegal and contrary to the principle of non-refoulement. Access to the asylum procedure must be guaranteed. Not much to say on this one, it speaks for itself. Who makes the rules and whose rules are supreme over those of Parliament? The EU, of course. Today in our video library, let's take a look back at the video we highlighted in September last year about the European Stability Mechanism. Now the key takeaway points are that this mechanism provides the EU with access to 700 billion euros of member states funds with a seven day payment deadline. The legislation is bound up tightly using the term irrevocable, meaning that national parliaments cannot veto the motion. But wait, it gets better. Much, much better. The 700 billion euros is just the start because the ESM Board of, of Governors is at liberty to change the capital as it sees fit. <laughs> now, the ESM Board of Directors, executives and staff are provided with complete judicial immunity. In essence, they have the power to sue us, but we can do nothing to them. Furthermore, all of their internal documents are secret. Well, that sounds like a very, very powerful instrument for the EU Commission to have in its pocket. Add to that the new powers that are being granted to the European Central Bank, and you can see that this fiscal integration is not just rhetoric, it's a reality that is now in the final furlongs. Now, I'm going to extend the nightly news this evening and allow the video regarding the ESM to play embedded in tonight's show. Now, the reason for this is that whilst hundreds of people have copied and re-uploaded this video, there has also been hundreds of YouTube accounts closed and taken down for running it. So watch this ESM video. It's truly shocking. Are the European Union and its common currency facing a crisis? What can and should be done? The EU is planning a new treaty called the European Stability Mechanism, or ESM. A treaty of debt. Members of Parliament all have access to the draft legislation. The authorized capital stock shall be 700 billion euros. Question. Why 700 billion? Where did that number come from? And by whom and on what basis was it calculated? ESM members hereby irrevocably and unconditionally undertake to pay on demand any capital call made on them within seven days of receipt of such demand. Question. Nothing, really. That part is clear. If the ESM needs money, we have seven days to pay. 
Taking normal bank processing times into account, that means we have four days to write a check. But what does irrevocably and unconditionally mean? What if we have a new parliament, one that doesn't want to transfer money to the ESM? Do we have to pay anyway? The Board of Governors may decide to change the authorized capital and amend Article 8 accordingly. Question. Pardon me? Seven hundred billion is just the beginning? The ESM can stock up the fund as much as it wants to, any time it wants to? And we would then be required, under Article 9, to irrevocably and unconditionally pay up? The ESM shall have full legal capacity to institute legal proceedings. The ESM, its property, funding, and assets shall enjoy immunity from every form of judicial process. Question. So the ESM program can sue us, but we can't challenge it in court? The property, funding, and assets of the ESM shall be immune from search, requisition, confiscation, expropriation, or any other form of seizure, taking, or foreclosure by executive, judicial, administrative, or legislative action. Question. Immune from judicial action was covered in the last point, but this means neither our governments, nor our legislatures, nor any of our democratic laws have any effect on the ESM organization? That's a pretty powerful treaty. Governors, alternate governors, directors, alternate directors, the managing director, and staff members shall be immune from legal process with respect to acts performed by them and shall enjoy inviolability in respect to their official papers and documents. Question. So anyone involved in the ESM is off the hook? They can't be held accountable for anything? And does the inviolability of their papers mean we can't destroy them or that we won't even be allowed to see what's been written? Treaty establishes a new intergovernmental organization to which we are required to transfer unlimited assets within seven days if it so requests. An organization that can sue us but is immune from all forms of prosecution and whose managers enjoy the same immunity. There are no independent reviewers and no existing laws apply. Governments cannot take action against it. Europe's national budgets in the hands of one single unelected intergovernmental organization is that the future of Europe? Is that the new EU? A Europe devoid of sovereign democracies? Is that what you want? Now time will tell, but I'm standing firm on my prediction with regard to Ireland. The banks in Ireland are to be some of the first to be put through the asset review exercise. We'll watch and see if the ECB finds the books cooked and the banks does hands in the cookie jar. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit. Nightly News. I'll see you soon.